Okay, folks, lesson 2C, Big Data Applications and Analytics slash Technology, Motivation and Overview Talk. This is a little lesson on various uh, little items that didn't quite fit in the other lessons, discussing why the, the total dominance of clouds and big data in the technology world we have. We have some trend graphs from Google and related sources. And then we have remarks on artificial intelligence from three good sources, Microsoft and the global AI supercomputer, linking intelligent cloud to intelligent edge. We have Gartner on some uh, AI issues for the enterprise, and Mary Meeker on AI uh, competition with China. Uh, which is not so clear that China isn't winning, um, in that they have actually a more concerted focus as far as I can see. But in any case, it's all highlighted actually even today by the trade war that we have with China and the US. All right, let's get going on this little lesson. Thank you very much. All right, fellows, now we come to a different section, uh, only loosely connected to the previous section. It is on the implications on applications and the revolution we're discussing, the data knowledge of artificial intelligence and deep learning. And as we've stressed over the last um, almost only three years, AI has emerged as the core technology. Uh, previously it was used and called machine learning, but now it's um, mature, much more mature, it's quite obvious it's a success, and it is in some sense, replace clouds and, and big data as the core technology. And if you look at that field, you have um, many sort of almost now enter, um, legacy systems, such as those from the big commercial companies and also Spark. Uh, those have machine learning often built around uh, well known um, toolkits, um, but uh, like SkyKit. But um, and th those are pretty. Re those are actually good at the lower end when you don't have large uh, large data and sophisticated applications algorithms. But if you go to a complex uh, machine learning or deep learning, which is probably the most complex and at least in terms of compute power needed, then you uh, those have for huge advantages, which have been shown, especially in language translation and voice recognition and autonomous uh, vehicles, and um, obviously NVIDIA has made a fortune from this. Part of its fortune is Bitcoins, the other part of its fortune is deep learning. And then of course it has its main business, um, gaming. And then there are a whole set of libraries which are mentioned here. CNTK from Microsoft, TensorFlow from Google, Cafe from Berkeley, and the uh, other systems mentioned here. These are software packages which run on a variety of different hardware, some more general than others. Well, here's another sort of look at AI from the fact that now many companies say they're AI companies. There was a time when Microsoft and Google announced they were mobile first. Their effort was trying to direct their business to the smartphones. That's because today smartphones have overtaken desktops as the leading interface to the internet. But if you look today, you will find those companies no longer, they're still focusing on smartphones, but they're now AI first companies. Their positioning in AI is what they think is gonna determine their success, not their positioning in the mobile world. That's probably good for Microsoft because it does screwed up the mobile world. But, um, and they're actually very good in AI. And here are just various uh, quotes from the, I grabbed from the web about, uh, which have AI. Um, where people of Google, Twitter, et cetera, are buying up AI startups. Google, Facebook, and Microsoft are remaking themselves around AI. These are just from 2017, so they're relatively recent. Google, the full stack AI company. AI is fueling Amazon's success. Microsoft says AI is the ultimate breakthrough. Um, Tesla has an AI guru who will make his cars more, more attractive and powerful. Netflix is using recommender engines, which is their 
application of AI to conquer the world. And also there's some bandwidth issues. But Google is remaking himself as a machine learning first company, which is the same thing as an AI first company. Because machine learning is sufficiently vague, it basically describes all major AI approaches today. And GE, is, which has got the industrial Internet of Things as a major product uh, area where it's putting on instrument and uh, putting on putting sensors on all its uh, uh, appliances from air, air refrigerators and um, um, air conditioners through aircraft. Uh, it is it has got a huge focus on the AI to interpret the signals from those sensors. And of course they all have to hire people and of course our Intelligent Systems Engineering Department is AI first engineering. So we are sort of happen to be aligned with this trend. Here, uh, here is a graph from uh, the AI index, which uh, shows that this is uh, not just um, a feature of NIPS, it's also a feature of all the AI conferences, where NIPS may be growing the most, because maybe because it's the most closely related to machine learning advances, um, which is the part of AI that's increasing most dramatically at the moment. But all parts of AI are increasing, as you see from this curve. ICML actually was not on, just finished this 2019, and if you just go online, you'll see the vibrancy of the field. Now we can look at a similar set of trends. So here we in Google Trends over the last five years. And here is some large things. Uh, we started, I started with artificial intelligence. And then I added security, which is sort of interestingly bigger. Although AI is growing, security is just uniformly important. I should point out in trends you have um, so-called um, topics, which means they look at everything around those words. And search terms, which means you have to be exact. And clouds, unfortunately, have um, obvious meanings about the weather, which means you can't. You have to really look for cloud computing. We'll come back to clouds a little later on and show that if you search for things like Amazon Web Services, you actually get a stronger indication than you, than you do here, where clouds are really ridiculously small. Also, big data is quite small. Computer science, which is the field, is solid. And now we are going to look at some smaller curves, starting with these two things here, which are pretty pretty tiny on this uh, this particular large graph. Remember that AI is much bigger than what we're going to see in the next slide. In the pre previous slide, we showed cloud computing was actually quite small compared to artificial intelligence, but that might be an artifact of the the that cloud com Computing's not available as a topic, only as a search term, which means you have to type exactly cloud computing. That's because we can't use clouds as a topic, because clouds as a topic includes things that give rain. So if we look at uh, this slide here, we see some tr AI, they, which is this increasing nice trend as you expect. And then we see uh, some components of cloud computing, AWS, Azure, um, Docker and Kubernetes, they're all growing growing dramatically. Kubernetes is smaller, but probably growing faster. And uh, they are actually quite competitive. And certainly the sum of them is more than AI. So I, I think the previous result, cloud computing uh, as a search term underestimates the trend in cloud computing. And this suggests that um, the increase actually in AWS Azure and Docker are very similar to that in AI. So I think that says, that, that says that the trend suggests that the cl cloud systems and um, AI are both increasing very significantly. All right, here we have a little comment on what I call the global AI and modeling supercomputer. It sort of summarizes the global frightening concept of a master AI monster sitting in the middle of the world, timing away, listening to its electrons and, and running its neural nets and deciding how to uh, position itself to take us over and control us. Um, so 
the, the, they articulated that the what the world was developing was a global AI. They just said AI, I added modeling, because you have to do modeling as well, supercomputer. And that it was just effectively the intelligent cloud linked to the intelligent edge, which we already discussed. And uh, there's some nice, you'll see lots of nice videos, including the one introducing the supercomputer. And um, global is interesting. It says that you have to do what uh, Gartner calls multi. Multi cloud, so Microsoft, Amazon, Oracle, IBM, Google. And there is a cloud at the logical center. It's actually physically distributed. I pointed out 500 to 1,000 uh, data centers. And there are a few uh, dominant players. But uh, there are several, it's not just one. And uh, they are. And they are all running supporting services. Then we have these technologies like the service mesh to link them together. So we have this global set of services, thing, observing us, calculating things, and uh, making predictions, and may, maybe possibly ordering decisions. If I, if you see me in a later talk being dragged away in the middle, you know what happened. Okay, here we have a picture which they showed for this. This is Donald Koosman, the head of um, the Microsoft Research Center, who gave this talk. And here's the global AI supercomputer he announced. It's, it features the intelligent edge, the intelligent cloud, data at the edge. It's a distributed data system or grid. And then we have the intelligent cloud, aggregates the data, analyzes and trains model. The edge tends to make inferences, so um, it's a uh, um, it's a classic model. And there's a mix of private and public clouds, and here's these edge devices up the top here. All right, so that's it. That's what we like, and um, here's the last um, slide in this set, which uh, points out uh, what the edge is. Here we have the core, the thousand giant data centers and the five million servers or whatever it is. And then at the edge we have people, mobile phones, desktops, refrigerators, aircraft. We have APIs to allow us to connect. We have augmented reality and virtual reality. We have bots. We have the Internet of Things. We have self-driving cars. And in between them, between the cloud and this edge, we have the fog or the cloudlets and the networking connecting them. So that's a nice picture. Um, so that comes from Mika in the 2019 uh, discussion she had of these issues. All right, the next uh, few slides are just sort of snippets from the um, Mika Internet Trends 2018. Uh, here they've focused on just some of the offerings of Google. Uh, where they have a, um, a cloud vision API, vision, computer vision. They have, they've actually moved into the hardware business. They've built their own uh, tensor processing units, which are very good at array operations, because uh, if you look at the heart of machine learning, it's usually uh, linear algebra, which is manipulations on vectors and matrices. And tensor processing units have been well known to be very powerful for that. And actually, this type of acceleration has been it's been around since the 1980s. When I started parallel computing in 1980, there were many people looking at not exactly tensor processing units, but units are motivated by the same idea that motivates the TPU. Uh, we have a, a user interface and AI. Remember that was one of the Gartner. Um, emerging technologies, and uh, we have uh, cloud machine learning, which um, automatically uh, produces models and trains them for you. So that's the Google AI platform. And here is sort of amusing um, record of all the things that are going on in the AI area as a function of time, and. Um, I, you know, actually, when did we do this? Around 85, we actually competed, and I, my research group competed, and 
did very bad in the World Computer Chess Championship with a, one of the first parallel computers, mainly handicapped by the unreliability of the computer. It, would, it kept breaking on us. But we did build a very powerful parallel computer chess program. Anyway, we got much, that, that field of me, matured very quickly, and there were all these uh, various um, uh, entries that were all from the USA, and China didn't compete in those days. Then we have a uh, soccer simulation league, RoboCup 99, where they had Europe and um, USA. 2005, we had an image processing thing where China competed, but not very successfully. And then we had uh, another major AI competition where Google and CMU, difficult to imagine a more powerful combination. And China, um, with Microsoft's collaboration, uh, or actually was in the, uh, took places two, three, four, and five. Um, so Alibaba, of course, is uh, China's answer to Amazon. So China is an emerging um, force in this area, and they have big government initiatives, actually larger initiatives than the US has. Although the US has a big focus on AI, which has replaced many of the previous focused efforts. Um, and here are some comments from uh, Eric Schmidt. And um, which says basically that China might catch up in five years. And um, I also note that Japan has a big national organizer. But so competition, like I would say that the nations are going to be competing in AI. And that's going to be the battle of the next 10 years. Not necessarily battle, but that's going to dominate the headlines of the capabilities in AI. Um, so this is um, China's uh, efforts, and um, they're building AI systems. They want to look at smart cities. They have a big effort called uh, Made in China 2025, which is building AI or AI controlled machines, some so-called software um, software based uh, machines, and uh, they're, they're trying to integrate to be an intelligent society. Uh, they have obvious military applications with commonality between the civilian, say, uh, civil defense, uh, crisis management rather, and military command and control. Um, both of those need very similar capabilities. And they all need uh, secure and a very efficient uh, infrastructure. This uh, pervasive infrastructure must run the global AI supercomputer in in effective fashion. And these slides point out that this global AI supercomputer is actually probably a national AI supercomputer. Each nation will have its own supercomputer, maybe each company. But I suspect companies in a given country will tend to have some collaboration. So this is a pretty um, exciting area. And uh, I anticipate enormous progress. Just we'll keep watching these areas of the how people judge that progress in AI. So that's it. We're finishing the AI part of the big data introduction, data deluge. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox signing off on Lesson 2B.